Lawyers cops of Reddit, what is the stupidest thing you've seen someone do to cover up a crime? A small town in Arkansas, the pharmacy is in a rock building with a tin roof. Some guys who steal crap figure out with a crowbar they'd get right in, and they were right. So they threw the drugs into the back seat instead of the trunk. They stop to get gas and are just about to be on their way. A state trooper is headed to the same station to take a leak and get coffee. The guys play it cool. They start the car and floor IT. Burned rubber nearly crashed getting on the highway. Being an experienced trooper this sparked his curiosity so he hits the lights and begins pursuit. Finally gets them stopped and once he sees a pile of pill bottles he has some idea about what may be going on. Hauls them to the county jail and is inventorying everything when the sheriff says the local pharmacist is on the phone so he may as well talk to him. Pharmacist wants to report a burglary. Trooper asks did they take and begins reading the inventory. Pharmacist says that sounds right. Trooper says well I think I solved it. I just imagine the pharmacist replying. That's some dang fine police work. The actor director Adrian Shelley was in her apartment when a guy broke in to rob the place. He punched her, knocking her out, thinking he killed her. He tried to make it look like she committed suicide by hanging her in the bathroom. Turned out she didn't die from the punch, but she did die from the hanging. Dude could have just gotten charged with B&E and assault. Instead he got convicted of murder. And now I want to see the waitress again. A female, distant family member got involved with an older guy, and together they kidnapped a guy to rob him, stole his car, murdered him and then drove to a remote place where they doused the car in gas and lit it on fire. The boyfriend got burned on his hands. They arrested the girlfriend when she was sharp lifting bandages and burned salve from the drugstore. The whole thing fell apart from there. They may have gotten away with it if she had bought the stuff for under 10 bucks. This reminds me of how Bob Durst was caught after killing and dismembering his neighbor in Texas. He was caught sharp lifting at a convenience store. Bob Durst is a millionaire and also a serial killer. There was a guy who went to his buddy's house after nearly beating his girlfriend to death. Police end up showing up to the house where the guy was. Friend answers and buddy shows up behind the guy not wearing a shirt. This is important. Police say who they're looking for and both men say they don't know who that person is. Here's the kicker. The guy that's shirtless, who beat his girlfriend half to death. He has his first initial and last name in a big bold tattoo across his chest. I knew a chick who robbed a house she was house sitting for silverware and jewelry. She pawned it off at the closest pawn shop to the house so she was caught right away. However, being the dope fiend she was, she poured bleach all over the house to get rid of her fingerprints. Instead of petty theft, she ruined the stairs and all the hardwood floors and paint on the walls and ended up with damages exceeding 10k if I remember correctly, which launched her well into new legal territories. Guy committed arson but he's such an idiot that he bought the propane tanks at Costco. Costco knows. A lot. I buy everything at Costco, which has kept me on the straight and narrow all these years. Not a criminal matter, but I worked on a child welfare case in which the parents were ordered to undergo hair follicle testing for drug use. So the father, not my client, thankfully, shaved off all the hair from his body, even his eyebrows. But he said it had nothing to do with the drug testing. It's just something he wanted to do. I think the kid ended up with relatives, in case you were wondering. Not a cop or a lawyer but I might as well tell my story while we're waiting for them to notice this thread. I was once on a jury where the defendant had robbed a house and then set it on fire to cover up his crime. Unfortunately this idiot had robbed his downstairs neighbor and the fire brigade discovered all the stolen goods when busting into his house to save him after he'd passed out from smoke inhalation. It took us maybe 5 minutes to find him guilty. Saw the trial for a guy who had killed a baby, strangle marks on its neck, bruising in its groin, bleeding from every orifice, so very obviously it was attacked and beaten. He claimed that he saw a spider when he woke with the baby on his chest, and accidentally threw it off the bed. He even freaking told a guy, who was called as a witness that he's done it and exactly how. What an idiot. There's special places in heck for people like this. I once defended a guy who was charged with harassing his ex-girlfriend, mostly through Facebook. As he waited for his trial date, this genius decided to set up a fake account in the name of his ex-girlfriend and privately message himself soppy love letters in an effort to prove this woman was actually still into him and he hadn't been harassing her. 
I guess he forgot that the messages he had been sending to his actual ex were things like frick you you freaking bee I'm going to rip your freaking sea out etc. I tried explaining that no amount of sappy feel good exchanges were going to explain that crap away even if the court believed his ridiculous story. But this guy kept insisting that the fake account was real, and you know, I had no proof it wasn't. And junior lawyer me lacked the experience to tell this guy to go fly a kite. So on the trial date he shows up and he has all these printouts of messages between him and his ex's new account. But he's totally gone off the deep end. He's started fighting with himself, through his pretend messages, rehashing old arguments he used to have with his ex. It was the saddest, stupidest echo chamber of idiocy I've ever had to shout through to get the client to pay attention. He couldn't even keep on good terms with his pretend ex that he had total control of. The messages had spiraled into much the same abuse. We went for a peace bond as a last minute plea bargain and I never heard from him again. A guy I worked with was being charged with dangerous driving following a pursuit involving a police helicopter. He would have faced a fine and one year driving ban. His lawyer told him to plead guilty. He ignored this advice and insisted on going to trial and his sole defense was that the police didn't have any kind of video recording proof of his crime as though this was some kind of technicality that would get him off. In questioning he even admitted to what he did, but still tried to convince the court that he was not guilty because there's no video recording. The court threw everything at him everything bar a prison sentence. Got a suspended one instead. The arresting police officer even told him he would just got a telling off had he stopped but his insistence on trying to play the system ended up majorly screwing him over. This doesn't fit in strictly with the question asked, but I once knew a woman going to crown court for charges of theft, benefit and credit card fraud, and she paid for the taxi to her hearing with a stolen credit card of one of the victims and still pled innocent. Yay. She went to prison. Just happened last night. I work in a college town. Around 2.30 the bars close and the parade of drunk students commences. Kid had one traffic cone on each arm and one on his head, walking jauntily down the main drag. As soon as I pulled up next to him he started doing the robotic drunk guy acting sober walk. Carefully put the cones down on the sidewalk and kept walking as though nothing had happened. Forgot about the one on his head, though. Tips traffic cone. My sister is a sergeant Leo that used to work in robbery. She shows up to court to be present for the case where a guy is on trial for robbing a bank. They have him on camera and he wants to represent himself. No lawyer. His opening line is, yes, your honor, I'd just like to point out that you can't tell that was me on camera because I was wearing a hat. Yay that was a fast trial. Of course it was fast. He had a hat. They got nothing on him. If he'd added some lemon juice it would have been the perfect crime. To all the shoplifters who think you're smooth, keep in mind grocery stores know what angle to put camera at to perfectly capture people stuffing things in their pockets or down the front of their shirts. And in many stores those cameras are higher quality than you'd think they'd be. I've had files where I can make a continuous film following someone around the store and out the door. Then cross reference the timestamp with the store receipts to show you paid for the mac and cheese but not the three steaks in your pants. I can't believe I went to school for 7 years for this. Some stores will also let you walk out and come back. You think they just caught you lifting $30 worth of cloths but they have been saving these videos up to the point where the value makes it a felony. This more of a failure to cover up, but I had a client who drove across the country to try to collect a drug debt. The police found the handwritten budget he had made for the trip. Items 1 and 2 were gun and bullets. My stepfather got drunk and hit a few parked cars. He drove home and hid the car in the garage. The cops followed the trail of antifreeze to our house. A standoff ensued with my dad holed up with guns. When the cops got in and arrested him he was shouting at the top of his lungs I am the outlaw Josie Wales. I was out with my boyfriend and missed it all. I was out with my boyfriend and missed it all. Probably for the best. Forge a hospital admission for an alibi. Pity the doctor whose signature got used was overseas for a conference. 
Katrina destroyed my cousin's house, so we took her in at just 21 years old. My cousin was an alcoholic and addicted to cocaine. This only came to light because she'd been stealing bottles of wine from the local gas station across the street. We found out because the same family had run the gas station for 30 years and the grandpa character was very, very good friends with my father. He actually called him out of concern. Tracy has been stealing wine. A lot of wine. At first, I think she is rebellious young girl. I did not call the police because I respect your family but I worry for her and cannot afford for her to take any more for free. God he sounds like such a genuine and kind person. That makes Trace's theft just so much worse. Client was accused of embezzling millions from a company. This was simply false. The company owner had been hiding it from his spouse. The owner's lawyer called me up to extort my client and told me that if our client testified as to faxes in support of his defense and the divorce, that they would appreciate it. If my client would not perjure herself, they would have her prosecuted. I recorded the attorney and filed a transcript along with a motion with the court. The judge brought down the hammer and he was professionally disciplined by our state licensing authority for attorneys. He was carrying a small butterfly knife, which is illegal. He tried to hide it by swallowing it, had to lean him forwards and frantically hit him on the back to dislodge the dang thing as he turned blue. It is like a $100 fine, and you lose the knife. So he ended up in much more trouble, but in the end he got off with a larger fine and a real talking to from a judge. Bloody twit. I dealt with a guy once who had burned his parents garage down. He had been drunk driving, hit a cyclist and hurt them. Driving ban. Fine. Maybe a suspended prison sentence given he had never been in trouble before. He was only 19 years old, but in his drunk mind he decided that police couldn't prove he had been drunk driving if there was no car. But he had parked the car back at home in the garage. So he freaking well set the garage on fire with a can of petrol. Destroyed the garage, the car, the side of the house, the mobile home parked on the driveway and a large proportion of his neighbor's garden. Still got charged with drunk driving amongst other things. Not a cop or lawyer but a few months ago my friend called me asking for advice. She was with a friend of hers and they had weed on them. And for an unrelated reason got into an altercation with local police. The cops were coming to her car. So she told her friend to hide the weed in her pants. The girl puts the bag of weed in her underwear. I guess. And when the cops came they could smell weed and were pretty much like alright. Guys just give it up. But they were both vehemently denying they had anything on them. And one of the cops was all on. What's sticking out of your pants and the girl argues that she's on her period and it's her pad. She was wearing leggings. And it was obvious. They clearly didn't buy it and could see something stuffed there. And after about 20 minutes of arguing they were pretty much like you either take it out now or we arrest you. Go downtown. And strip search you. The girl got a weed ticket. Cops must have had some time to kill. There was only one end result that was going to happen. Surprise that it took 20 minutes to get there. Also, if the cops have called you out on BS in this scenario, and your worst case is a fine, just take it and move on with your life. You're not going to pull an OB1 on the cops where they wander away confused and you get away scot-free. Not a cop or lawyer but former corrections officer. We had a guy who murdered his neighbor. So after the murder he set the apartment on fire as well as a car and at some point cut off the victim's arms. He then threw the arms at first responders to the fires. Yeah it was a weird night. Talk about armed and dangerous. My ex-boyfriend started beating me in front of four of my friends. And after they pulled him off of me, he called the police on them for assault. Saw a guy get arrested across the street from the ED. His defense was no officer, I don't do drugs, this weed ain't for me, I just sell it man. Apparently he thought selling was legal, but doing it wasn't. Moved himself up to a felony though. I was at an insurance place and a guy smashed up his car and claimed he hit a deer and he shoved fur in the cracks and seems that wasn't deer fur and then in the car was his dog with the matching color fur and a big shaved spot ha ha. A guy who has pretty severe mental health issues stole a car. He crashed it into a fence about a mile down the road. He then wrote his full name, first and last, in the dirt, along with an arrow. When we caught him at his mother's house a short time later, he was shocked. He had gone the opposite direction of the arrow, and couldn't believe that his ruse had been beaten. 
You have been visited by the skilled Papa Reply Jit Gud, Papa for good skill. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.